This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The wilds of Hyrule are dominated by three different overworld bosses. The Cyclopean Hinox and their Stal variant, the desert-dwelling Mulduga, and the mountainous Taluses. These stone golems appear in three different forms, stone, frost, and igneo, not counting the colossal igneo talus titan fought during the Champion's Ballad, or the miniature peblets. Taluses disguise themselves as a pile of rocks, but if an unsuspecting traveler enters their territory, they reveal themselves, a towering creature which appears to be made of solid stone. This rocky exterior serves both as camouflage and as defense. Link can't harm the beast with melee weapons or arrows, instead having to aim for the vulnerable ore deposit on the back. Despite their appearance as moving mountains, taluses aren't just possessed stone. They're organic life forms which have evolved to appear like rock. In addition to junior and senior taluses, which imply their parents and offspring, we can see peblets, miniature versions of the titans which haven't yet matured to their full size. Their bodies are still weak enough to be broken by Link with a throw. Apparently they toughen as they age, and by the time they reach maturity they're hard as boulders. Organic life forms made from, or built like, rocks aren't uncommon in the Zelda series. We see Trinex in A Link to the Past, the Gemasaur King in A Link Between Worlds, which even features gemstones like taluses, but more commonly, the humble Goron. A Goron's diet is primarily rocks, though a special type of rock that doesn't appear everywhere, famously mined in Ocarina of Time's Dodongo's Cavern. I once saw a great comparison online. It's like how humans can eat all kinds of plants. Crops we grow in fields, fruits from trees, berries, wild vegetables, but we can't just straight up eat trees or grass. Just like this, the Gorons feast on particular types of rock, which perhaps is the reason for their hardened bodies, with most Gorons having a rough, rocky back, and some older Gorons even growing volcanic vents. There's a fan theory that the Taluses actually came from outer space, a form of sentient asteroid crash-landed in Hyrule, beings from distant worlds, or the void of interplanetary space. This is due to a Talus being found dead in the center of Giza Crater in the west of Hyrule, perhaps where it fell from the stars. However, the existence of peblets, young taluses yet to grow to their full size, suggests that they might have just evolved like regular animals alongside the fact that only one talus is found in a crater. Regardless of their origins, taluses are as tough as boulders, and tower over Link, being well over 7 meters, or 23 and a half feet, tall. That's a lot of rock. A talus boss fight is initially quite imposing, but when wielding a Goron weapon or a sledgehammer, tools designed for mining and smashing stone, the titans can be destroyed with ease. After being awoken from their slumber by Link wandering too close, the Taluses attack, either by slamming their bodies down on Link, or more commonly, by throwing the boulders which make up their arms at him. I've never really paid much attention to this attack, until I saw this tweet from Nintendo Treehouse's Jose Otero, where a Talus throws a boulder all the way from the island on Lake Colomo, hitting Link standing on the ruins by the shore. This is an unbelievably long throw, especially for a boulder which dwarfs Link, and it travels this massive distance in less than three seconds. What if you were hit by this insane throw? How much force would the talus's arm exert on your body if it was thrown such an insane distance at this speed? But first, being hit with the boulder would be pretty painful, unlike building a website with Squarespace which is all the tools you need built into the site, meaning you can knock up a professional website without any technical know-how or coding knowledge. I'm still building my own Squarespace site, zeltic.co.uk, slotting in features like a mini gallery to organize my various video series, like collecting the Ocarina of Time Temple series I'm working on in one place. The platform is really simple and user-friendly, but if you're having trouble with anything, there's 24-hour support available the whole year round. 
If you'd like to build your own site with Squarespace, you can use my link, squarespace.com forward slash Zeltic, to grab 10% off your first purchase. And there's always the free trial, which requires no card details, so if you're not feeling it, you can cancel with no strings attached. So check out my own site, zeltic.co.uk, or head over to squarespace.com forward slash Zeltic to make your own. So let's calculate just how hard a talus boulder throw would hit. First, I wanted to see what the maximum distance I could get the talus to throw a boulder was. If Link is too far away, the talus will either despawn or lose sight of him, doing a cute little confused animation before returning to rubble. So the furthest I managed to get the monster to throw the rock was this distance, slightly further than the original tweet. We can use the Ridgeland Towers paragliding minigame to measure distance. I glided just under 550 meters in a straight line from the tower to this spot, which is just under four times the distance of the talus's throw, making the throw 141 meters. This is a little more than the throw to the ruins, which measures around 124 meters. The time from the moment the boulder leaves the talus until the frame it hits Link is exactly two and a half seconds so we can work out that the boulder was traveling at an average velocity of 56.4 meters per second, until it abruptly comes to a halt, exploding on impact with our hero. To work out the force this gigantic boulder would exert on Link, we need a couple of figures, the mass of the boulder and the deceleration when it hits him. To work out the mass, we'll have to cut a corner for ease and assume the boulder is a perfect sphere, which it isn't, because otherwise estimating the exact mass would be incredibly difficult. We can see that these boulders thrown by the taluses aren't small whatsoever. It's around three times as tall as he is. Other incarnations of Link have their cannon height at around 5 foot 3 inches, or 1.6 meters, and this Link appears to be a similar height, shorter than the average male Hylian. If Link is 1.6 meters, it makes the diameter of this boulder a huge 4.5 meters, which will allow us to work out the mass. Assuming it's a perfect sphere, which again it isn't, we can plug a 2.25 meter radius into the sphere volume equation to get a total volume of 47 cubic meters. While we don't know the density of a talus's body, we do know that they're as tough as boulders, meaning they probably have a similar density to stone. Most types of rock are somewhere between 2 and 3 grams per cubic centimetre, so if we assume a talus has the same density as granite, 2.75 grams per cubic centimetre, we can work out the mass of the thrown boulder as an unbelievable 131 tonnes, or 290,000 pounds. That's the same weight as 87 cars. But not only is this rock massive, it's travelling incredibly quickly, 56 meters a second horizontally. But in addition to this, the talus also manages to hurl the boulder incredibly high in the air, not just directly towards Link. It's impossible to know the exact point when the rock reaches its peak height, but knowing the rock is somewhere around 4.5 meters in diameter, we can see that it's somewhere around 5.5 times the rock's size. 24.75 meters, or 81 feet, in the air. An 131 ton rock falling on you from any height, let alone 80 feet, would hurt just a little bit. So not only is the rock flying at Link at a huge speed, it's also falling down on him, meaning it's going to do more damage than it would if it just flew straight. We know the horizontal velocity, 56 meters a second, but we also need to work out the vertical, which we can using the rock's gravitational potential. A rock of this mass at this height has a gravitational potential of 31 million joules, all of which would theoretically be converted to kinetic energy when it lands on Link. Knowing the kinetic energy and the mass, we can work out the velocity that the rock must be falling at when it hits Link, 22 meters a second. Now we know the velocity both horizontally and vertically, we can work out what's called the effective velocity, combining both to work out the overall velocity the rock travels at. If it's flying forwards at 56 meters a second and falling at 22, it makes the effective velocity 61 meters per second, unbelievably fast for a rock this size. 
Now, finally, we can work out just how hard this boulder is hitting Link. To do this, we need to know the deceleration, how quickly it comes to a stop and from what speed. While in-game the boulder instantly explodes when it hits Link, giving an infinite deceleration, this is just because the interaction isn't worked out using the game's physics engine. Rather, just the rock has a set impact animation it switches to when it collides. A more realistic impact time would be the time it takes Link to be knocked over by the boulder, which we can see takes 20 frames, or two-thirds of a second. Using this impact time, and the effective velocity of 61 meters a second, we can work out that the deceleration of the boulder was 91 meters per second squared. Which doesn't mean anything to us yet, but now we've got everything we need to plug into the main formula, and work out the full force Link is being struck with. So, Link is being struck with a force equivalent to the mass, 131,211 kilograms, multiplied by the change in velocity, 91 meters per second squared. This results in a final force measurement of 11,916,807 newtons. The Talus' boulder smacks into Link with just under 12 million newtons of force. That's one third the thrust force of the largest and most powerful space rocket ever, the gargantuan Saturn V at launch. With the rock's mass and velocity, we can also work out the kinetic energy of the traveling boulder. An 131 ton rock traveling at 61 meters a second has a kinetic energy of 240 million joules, the same as a Ford Focus traveling at 1,300 miles an hour. Just from these numbers alone, I can't see any monster in Hyrule having a more powerful attack than the Talus' rock throw. Even more so when you take into account that these rocks could be flaming or frozen with Igneo or Frost taluses. Even compared to other monumental attacks from colossal enemies, like the Hinox's Body Slam or Tree Swing, or Molduga's Bite, the sheer mass of the Talus's boulder, coupled with just how far it's able to throw it and how fast, makes the Stone Golem most likely the strongest creature in Hyrule. Not counting attacks which aren't possible to calculate, like Dark Beast Ganon's magic or a Guardian laser. The Talus, with this throw, was able to generate an unholy amount of force. An impact so powerful that, were you hit by it in real life, you'd be blown to pieces instantaneously, or mashed into a hero puree. However, just like with the Lionel Charge, Link is able to dig in his heels, clench his jaw, and bat away the entirety of the boulder strike with a parry. By swinging his shield, the hell, not even a shield, a pot lid, Link is able to counteract over 12 million newtons of force, somehow generating an equivalent force to throw back at the rock just as he can do with a full Lionel Charge, which I've previously calculated. It doesn't matter how powerful the monsters inhabiting Hyrule are, and how much force they can throw at Link, the hero of Hyrule remains the strongest. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. A huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Check them out if you'd like to build your own website. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.